Happy Hobbit Day, and hi from Weta Workshop in Wellington, New Zealand. I'm Richard Taylor, co-founder of Weta Workshop and in turn our game studio. To celebrate Hobbit Day, we want to share an in-depth look at our beautiful new game, Tales of the Shire. Today, you're going to hear from our team who have been hard at work to bring Tales of the Shire to life along with cozy content creators. <laughs> I just got an achievement for skipping. Live sim streamers. Loading up the game and getting into the Shire truly felt like going home. And even Lord of the Rings aficionados. Oh, this is adorable. Who've had a sneak peek at the game and are keen to share their thoughts with you too. We have wanted something like a life simulator in the Shire for years. The fact that there hasn't been one before is a crime. Every single corner you could tell was painstakingly created. We've been immersed in Middle Earth for decades, to the point that it's become a bit of a second home for some of us. We've lived and breathed this world and its stories, and many of you have been with us throughout our journey. Inspired and informed by all that experience and time in the Lord of the Rings universe, we've crafted an exceptionally cozy experience for the places to explore and make your own. Sit in one of our favourite places in Middle Earth, the Shire. Tales of the Shire is a Lord of the Rings gaming experience like nothing that's come before. Players will have the opportunity to immerse themselves in the world of the Shire by cooking mouth-watering recipes, exploring the nooks and crannies of Bywater, and building friendships and relationships with their fellow hobbits. It's a game about fellowship, community, and comfort, about finding joy in the small moments. But most importantly, it's a game about living as a hobbit. We love hobbits, and with Tales of the Shire, we want to immerse you in their world. That could mean tending your garden season by season, seeing what you can catch in Bywater Pool, or just taking a stroll by the creek and enjoying the day. We knew that capturing the feeling of the Shire was really crucial to our player experience. The Shire is easygoing. It's a place where hobbits rest in the afternoon sun on a cool summer's day, it's joyous, it's full of the laughter of chit-chatting neighbours, and it's cosy. It's a place where you can cuddle up in your own hobbit hole with a hot cup of tea. One of our biggest goals is to really deliver on these feelings and immerse the players in them. Every aspect of the game has been carefully crafted, drawing on our years of experience with The Lord of the Rings and with Tolkien's books always as our guide. Each bridge, path, plant, hobbit home and second breakfast is drawn from the original vision. The game is a homage to all those wonderful details and the spirit we fell in love with when we first encountered the Shire. We're not in the Shire for a very long time in the books, but it is the thing that at the end of the day, the hobbits are trying to save. Going into this game definitely feels as though you're sort of walking through the rolling hills and farms and flowers and just nature. Tolkien was inspired by the countrysides of his home in Great Britain and the Shire is the epitome of safety and comfort and food and friends. The core of our game centers on building community and fellowship. You spend your time in the village of Bywater, helping to lift the community up and sharing home-cooked meals with other hobbits. As your ties to the community of Bywater and your bonds with your friends grow, your fellowship increases, which allows you to progress in the story. Tales of the Shire is full of tales that are perfectly hobbit-sized. Our story begins shortly after you arrive in Bywater, when you learn that the place has a problem. It might not be a village. It's up to you to help build the community up and make it into the kind of village the whole Shire would envy. I'm excited to help the village to find its villagehood and be like 
officially recognized. I love a story in which I get to impact the town or the place that I live in the game and get to help the other characters. As we crafted our main story and our side tales, we kept the Hobbit perspective in mind. Hobbits prefer a secluded country life, focused on what delicious thing they're going to cook for their next meal, or how they need to mend that fence in their back garden before their chickens get any ideas. Hobbit holes are the centre of Hobbit life. They provide a refuge from the wider world, a level of comfort that Hobbits require. They're a chance to express themselves in their own space and a place to share their meals with their friends. Hmm. You truly get to see a Hobbit in their element when they are in their Hobbit hole. The game opens with you hitching a ride with a certain mysterious stranger to Bywater a hobbit settlement in the Shire. You've inherited a hobbit hole from a generous relative who, in her old age, boarded off many of the rooms to save her time on cleaning and upkeep. As you explore Bywater and deepen your ties to the community, you'll be able to get into those boarded up rooms and add your personalized touch. Perhaps you can put together a library or a bedroom, or maybe you'll just set up a cozy nook for relaxing in true hobbit style. The choice is yours. My favourite room is probably the living room. You can put your little fire and your couches and your rug and you can really make it feel homely. And it's the first place that you see when you come into the Hobbit home. So that's where it really kind of feels like home to me. To fill these rooms, you'll be gifted furniture and knickknacks that you'll use to decorate and turn your Hobbit hole into a Hobbit home. You can earn these by completing tales and building relationships with your neighbour Hobbits or by cooking a particularly delicious meal that another Hobbit was looking forward to. When you're ready to do a little interior design, you'll enter decoration mode, where you can rotate and move all of your furniture and decor items to find just the right place for them in your hobbit hole, or even out in your garden if that's where you think they'd look best. I think what makes a really great cozy game is being able to really get in the nitty gritty details of like placing clutter on things and making it as cozy as either your real life or making it a cozier space than real life and somewhere you feel like you can go escape to. Unlike in other games where you're limited to a grid when decorating your home, we've created a flexible placement system that gives you the freedom to put everything where you want. Our system keeps things cosy in the rounded spaces of a hobbit hole while never getting in the way of your imagination. You can place items almost anywhere, inside or outside. You can also style your walls with different wallpaper and even change the window frames. All of this will let you create the hobbit hole of your dreams that expresses your own unique hobbitness. A gridless placement system is so much fun because it just opens up this world of possibility. And in a Hobbit home, you know, you want things to look a little higgledy pickledy. You don't want them all perfect to grid. That just is not part of the Hobbit aesthetic. You need a little bit of, you know, freedom to build as you wish. Players can spend hours decorating and redecorating their Hobbit holes to be their own perfect hideaway and bywater. But that doesn't mean there's nothing to explore outside. Just a short walk from your front gate is Bywater, your new home. It's a small but vibrant community, full of hobbits to meet and things to see. You'll of course want to explore Bywater, and we had loads of fun designing a charming way to let our players know where the next interesting thing might be, without making them feel railroaded. That's our unique bird system. As you ramble along Bywater's scenic paths, past its quaint homes and shops, and through its beautiful meadows, you notice these cute bluebirds perched on signs, trees, and elsewhere. These sweet little guys aren't just here for atmosphere. They're a way of welcoming you, and they indicate the path to your next objective or tales. The birds act as a sort of breadcrumb trail. Go to one and you'll see another a little further on, and so on, until you arrive at your destination. The birds really are helping. Thank you, birds. I appreciate you. But you don't have to follow the birds if you don't feel like it just then. There are plenty of things for you to find in Bywater if you want to do a little wandering. Bywater really encourages you to go and find all the little nooks and crannies because it's such a rolling, hilly place where you don't have a lot of like easy sight lines of where things are. So 
you want to find out what's around the next corner, what's over that little hill and discover all the little relics and, and places you can find your next mushroom in. Bywater is full of unique locations, from Sandy Man's Mill to the Ivy Bush Inn, where the hobbits of Bywater meet to discuss important affairs. But one of my favourite spots in Bywater is the Green Dragon Inn. This is the centre of social life in the village, and any hobbit who wanders in day or night is sure to leave with a few new friends. You'll find yourself here for many of the story beats in the game, but you can always come by if you want some good conversation with the innkeeper, Lily Cotton. Bywater is a village in the west farthing of the Shire. It houses the Green Dragon Inn, perhaps one of the most famous inns in all of the Shire or Middle Earth, where we see the rest of the hobbits uh, drinking and eating and being very merry. Mm -mm -mm. Just down the hill from the Green Dragon is a square full of bustling market stalls, selling everything a hobbit needs. Head to young Tom Cotton's stall for farm fresh ingredients for your next meal. Visit the Burroughs' store for a new dress. Or just go through Nora's wares to see if any strike you. There are plenty of other things to see in Bywater, and we can't wait for you to discover them. Whether it's foraging for berries in the countryside, stargazing on clear nights, helping find someone's missing mail, or just lazily watching the seasons go by, we've designed every element of Bywater to be the kind of place that we'd like to live. I really like the way that we've done Fishing and Tales of the Shire. I think it's really interesting and I think that it scales nicely with the player's experience. I think we've got him. I think we've got him. Yay! We got a fish. We got a bywater bleak. Our design philosophy was all about how to infuse the entire game with hobbit-sized ideas and activities. And hobbit-sized isn't just a unit of measurement, it's a way of life. For example, it's not farming, it's gardening. Everything encourages togetherness and is just quintessentially cosy. It's about being part of a community and building your own place within the Shire. I think the Shire is a perfect setting for a cosy game. It is this cosy little bubble with all of these kind people and this small community. I think that's exactly what cosy gamers look for when they're going to a cosy game. Our game offers a chance for our Hobbit players to step into that Hobbit mindset. A world where the most important thing you do in a day is help a neighbour. And there aren't any problems that can't be solved by talking things through over a nice meal. It's those meals that make up the centrepiece of the game, where you'll deepen your bonds with your neighbours and move the story forward. As you get to know the other hobbits in Bywater, you'll have a chance to cook meals that they'll love. After all, the way to a hobbit's heart is through their stomach. But hosting hobbits is no easy task. You'll have to pay attention to the seasonality of your ingredients and what your guests have told you they feel like eating if you want to pull off the kind of meal that Bywater will talk about for years to come. You'll start in your pantry, where you've stored all the ingredients and seasonings that you've foraged, harvested, caught, or bought. Each ingredient and seasoning has a quality score of one to three stars, as well as one of five flavors, sweet, sour, spicy, salty, and bitter. You'll have to think about what will work well together to satisfy your guests' specific cravings. Once you've selected your ingredients, you'll take them into the kitchen and start cooking a feast fit for a hobbit. To begin with, you'll only have access to a few cooking stations in your kitchen, but as you progress and learn more complex recipes, you'll find yourself frying, mixing, sourcing, grinding, and even pickling. When you're done, you'll get to reveal your meal and have it rated. The better your guests rate the meal, the stronger the relationships you build, and the more friendship points you earn. These reveal new features in the game, open up opportunities to progress, and help you further customize your hobbit hole. It's such a unique way to focus cooking in a game. And I love that because cooking is such a cozy activity that so many people take part in and so many people love to escape into. If I could cook anything in the game, it would definitely be a meat pie. I've never cooked a meat pie in my life, and so I would love to do it in the game in a very cozy setting for all of my friends in the Shire. We actually looked at recipes from the 18th century, some 17th century recipes, some Victorian recipes, because really it's Victorian England is the Shire. And then obviously we took inspiration from other things as well. We sort of mixed in some modern stuff, but nothing that's incongruously modern. It was all the sort of thing that you would have found in a Victorian kitchen, really. Hmm. It's 
not a proper Hobbit meal without friends to share it with. And there are plenty of Hobbits in Bywater to befriend, with stories of their own for you to discover. There's Orlo Proudfoot, the first friend you meet when you arrive in Bywater. Or Delphinium Brandybuck, the town healer whose cures never seem to turn out right until an encounter with a certain grey-bearded wizard helps her discover her true purpose. <laughs> Some Bywater residents will teach you important skills, like Old Noakes, the cantankerous hobbit down by the banks of Bywater Pool. Lily Cotton loves to share some of her cooking knowledge, while Delphi can show you how to forage in the countryside. Others will give you the opportunity to trade, like Hobson Hornblower, the travelling merchant who brings goods from far and wide, or Nephi, dwarf from the Blue Mountains, who arrives in Bywater with her armoured duck ladle. Trading works alongside shopping to give players a new way to advance in the game, one that emphasises the sense of community that Tales of the Shire is all about. As you build up your relationships with certain hobbits, you'll be able to trade what you have with them for specific items. The more you improve your relationship with them, the better the items you can trade for will be. The system rewards strengthening your ties with the other folks living in Bywater and gives you another reason to get out and meet your neighbours. And great neighbours make great dinner guests. Throughout the game, you'll be able to host your friends for special meals. You'll control all the details, from who you invite, to the venue, to table settings and decorations, to most importantly, the menu. You'll need to learn your neighbours' likes and dislikes to really wow them, but if you throw the perfect dinner, you might get a special gift in the post the next day. Hobbits love giving gifts, after all. If I had my own ideal Hobbit dinner party, I would be inspired by Bilbo's birthday party. <laughs> I would invite the entire fellowship, all of them. They're all there. <laughs> I really want people to experience joy. I think that's what the Shire is, is joy. I hope that players feel not just a sense of peace and restfulness, but also a bit of nostalgia. If we manage to put smiles on everybody's faces when they're playing and they feel like it's somewhere that they want to live, then I think that's our job done. We want you to really feel like you're going to be at home. We just really want Tales of the Shire to feel like a warm hug. <laughs> we want playing Tales of the Shire to be a chance for you to slow down a little bit, to lose yourself in a world that's a little brighter, a little warmer, and yes, a little more cosy than the real world. For us, that's what games are. A chance to immerse yourself in the wonders of another magical world. A chance to go somewhere nice, somewhere new, but familiar, that you can make your own. Some place where friends are waiting for you to share a meal and a smile. The Shire. We hope you'll join us there when Tales of the Shire arrives everywhere on March the 25th. Have a great Hobbit day and please follow our friends and influencer partners as they showcase more of the game features. And tell us on socials what other content you'd like to see. From all of us here at Weta Workshop Game Studio, thanks so much for tuning in today.